Welcome to the first campaign gameplay from Shadow and the Blade. Today, we're on board with the Tyrant of Hag Grief, the infamous Malice Darkblade. Malice has always relied, first and foremost, on his own dark determination and limitless reservoir of hate. It is a testament to Darkblade's determination that he not only sought deeper, darker forms of power, but that he was able to survive the possession of the Drinker of Worlds, one of the most powerful demons in the Warhammer universe. As such, when you are playing as Malice, you are also playing as Zarkan, the Drinker of Worlds. Malice and Zarkan are bound together as one. Every turn, Zarkan's possessive power saps at Malice's mind, manifesting itself in a powerful demonic form. Zarkan and his whispers of carnage and great reward can be thwarted by regularly taking elixirs to cage his ever-advancing possession. His affliction is both a terrible curse and an immeasurable source of power, and mastering these possession states is key to conquering Darkblade's campaign. In order to obtain the elixir's recipe from Malekith, you'll need to help him gain the scrolls he needs to harness the power of the Vortex for himself. From time to time, Zarkan will torment Malice with whispers encouraging murder, carnage, or war in exchange for powerful, unique rewards. Every twisted whisper Malice adheres to confers him more demonic strength, but also corrodes his mind, ceding more control to Zarkan and increasing his reliance on Malekith's ever more costly elixirs. The possession bar shows how much influence Zarkan has over Malice. When the possession bar is maxed out, Zarkan's powers can be utilized by Malice at the expense of his campaign capabilities. When the possession bar reads a negative value, Malice gains increased campaign capabilities, but will be less effective in battle. I'm one turn from getting access to my Zarkan form here, so I'm going to stall out if I can. As soon as I'm done here, I'll down a couple of elixirs and use the sizable construction cost reduction to fast track any rebuild. If anyone gets any smart ideas, I can instantly call on Zarkan's demonic battle benefits, but I can only do this once every 40 turns. Minimum Possession also gives me access to the Rite of the Warmaster, instantly drawing a full stack of Druki aligned beasts to fight for my cause. Malice clawed his way to the top, from a lowly bastard son to the imperious ruler of the mercantile fortress city of Hag Grief. The duality of Malice is reflected in his start position options. Malice starts the game with ownership of the mighty Hag Grief, as well as an expedition force led by Darkblade himself. He may be far from home, but with a black art as a mobile base of operations, he's well equipped to thrive. In the opening turns of the campaign, you are confronted with a dilemma to give up Hag Grief in exchange for a substantial war chest in order to accelerate your voyage. This promotes more fertile conditions than ever seen before in Total War for picking your own start position, especially when combined with the Black Ark's newfound ability to attack and reinforce port settlements. Checking out Malice's skill tree, we can see tapping into his eternal hatred and stomping Ulthuan is maybe the quickest way to earn Malekith's favor. Digging deeper, we can see skills that strengthen both his pure form and others that bring a whole new dimension to Tsarkan's domination. Reaching level 15 allows access to Contempt and Hatred, a considerable power spike no matter what your playstyle. Whether you take the cash or not, Malice's campaign is packed with possibilities. I've opted for the frantic, dual start position style for this playthrough. Fresh off my naval invasion of the Serpent's Coast, I found myself tangled in a complicated engagement between Malekith and the Crone. By the way, don't forget to make use of campaign bookmarks to zoom to each location in seconds. That's Control F9 to F12 to set a bookmark, and that F key again to fly to that spot. Malekith is a vital ally in the Hagreave start position, and staying on his good side is especially important when your resources are stretched across two fronts. The unique Hagreave mines are also a massive boon in this regard. Their local upkeep reduction assists you in fielding two armies early, but further expansion will require a more stable economy. My Hagreave efforts are led by my High Beastmaster, a new anti-large lord type for the Druki, whose skill tree reflects their exceptional aptitude when it comes to bending beasts to their will. He's very loyal at the moment, but he might think twice if I spend too much time in the company of the Drinker of Worlds. He's joined by the Bloodrack Medusa. She has armor-piercing laser eyes and a fantastic high mass charge to slither away from any unfavorable engagements. Her horrifying visage causes both fear and terror to enemy units. Let's fast forward to turn 56, 
where we finally hunted down the warp gate that we need to return to the Chaos Wastes. Here, we can sate the thirst of the Warp Sword of Cain, another of the legendary weapons associated with the Bloody Hand of God. It is there, in the lands where he first took up the Warp Sword of Cain, that its power will finally be renewed. Darkblade was always arrogant and ambitious, even by Druki standards, but his curse has convinced him that no foe can best him. Let's see what happens when the Drinker of Worlds faces off against the Eater of Suns, Kolek himself. Fortunately, I have some new tools at my disposal to aid me. These Scourge Runner Chariots are the perfect tool for cutting through heavily armoured beasts. The Regiment of Renown variant, unlockable at level 20, even has poison attacks to help kite enemies into their inevitable doom. Malice himself is already pretty tanky, with a large health pool in addition to armour, but Zarkhan's demonic influence provides him with an additional health bar, altered abilities and a stat amp. With the caveat that after transforming, his HP is constantly ticking down, providing an extra incentive to finish the fight with malicious haste. Check out our Twitch channel 3pm December 4th to see the conclusion of this Let's Play. There's a brand new rat to play, and he has some devious campaign mechanics with outrageously powerful possibilities. 